Hi, I'm Peter Fatty. I'm very glad to be able to speak here at the inaugural Sports Biometrics Conference and speaking on something that might be a little bit out of the box for uh, sports performance specialists, but is something that you might want to consider bringing into the box. I'm going to talk about real video, RV, versus virtual reality, VR, for training high-speed decision-making in an aspect of performance in sports, and particularly in baseball batting. Uh, but let me start completely out of the box with, perhaps you'll recognize, some of the guitar hero. Well, you know, you play the little uh, plastic Gibson guitar and you get points for coming in at the, at the right time with the bass and drums. And uh, that leads to our poll question. Can playing Guitar Hero help you learn to play guitar? So a uh, show of hands for yes. Assume the others are no. Looks like about 15% yes. It's about as high as that ever goes. And um, of course, you know, how does, how does playing that little plastic guitar help you develop the calluses you need to play a real electric guitar or, or put out a campfire with your fingertips? Well, a recent study shows that indeed, if we look at the perceptions of music scores, playing Guitar Hero, the gamers, actually scored better on recognition skills in music, melody, tempo, and rhythm over actual musicians, while the musicians scored higher in, in the actual physical skill, in this case, tuning, and we would suppose uh, fingering chords as well. Uh, but if you take a subtask approach and you look at the recognition part, indeed, playing Guitar Hero can help you learn to play guitar. All right, so let's bring that a little bit more into our realm. How is this going to help guys uh, be able to hit major league breaking balls. Uh, do we have something with our technology that will be uh, faster in developing that skill than the default method that we have used for however many years of more and more at-bats until your eyes bleed? Well, one interesting development now is virtual reality. Here, Eon Sports Cube and seeing that we're, we actually have a 3D representation of a pitch coming in. And uh, this is something that many major league organizations are looking at, and at least one uh, is uh, publicly acknowledged as having uh, purchased and used, that being the Rays. This from a Los Angeles Times article. And uh, it, interestingly, you had Stephen Souza Jr. Uh, really describing, I think, the proper use of the tool, because this models the pitch. This, this takes the stat cast data and actually models what that pitch here from Alex Wood looks like uh, coming in. So it's like a system one, system two uh, type of thinking here. I've seen the book, Dan Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow, on the bookshelf of some, some uh, major league uh, folks, and it should be on there. System one thinking is that fast, intuitive uh, thinking without thinking that, of course, you want in the batter's box. System two is that analytical, slow, deliberate uh, type of thinking. And that's what's going on here. That's what Seuss is describing. He doesn't even use the batter's view. He uses a, a, a kind of a catcher's view. He really wants to get to know what that pitcher's pitches do. On the other hand, Longoria is quoted in one of the stories as saying, well, it's an interesting technology, but it's not there yet. It's not realistic. It's not like actually having an at-bat against that guy. And that displays the simulation bias. That is that what we're after here is to master a technology challenge, to make this experience as realistic as possible, the whole experience. Well, that's great if what you're trying to do is learn to hit. Longoria doesn't need to learn to hit. It's good to know if what you're trying to do is track the ball, as Sousa describes. But if you're focused on pitch recognition in that first third and pattern recognition, then you're really focused on the wind-up and delivery and very early ball flight. Real pitches from real pitchers using photorealistic video, because the other ultimately is a, a representation, a mathematical model, as opposed to the photorealistic view. Here's what this video occlusion method looked like in the research laboratory. This has been used since the early 1980s. 
That's all. See, watch what happens when we cross him up. That's all. Split. Oh, uh, a curve. Split. So he struggles a little bit, and then he's he's he's, he's right Split. back into 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 guessing the pitches. And this is the most Split. extreme Split. occlusion cutoff, right as the ball comes out of the hand. So this is the research Split. method yeah. that has been Split. used with baseball, batting, cricket, return of serve yes. in tennis, goalie play, and soccer and hockey. Any of these ballistic sports actions where the experts are somehow able to do this um, by the book impossible task while seeming to have all the all the time in the world. Now. Uh, we've gone and taken this same video occlusion method, very simple method, out into the field, extended it from the laboratory, and been able to to uh, uh, test a couple of hundred major league uh, organization players, you know, affiliated minor league players in spring training, as well as Cape Cod players. That's the basement of Orleans, that da- dark spot off on the right, uh, with a simple um, video test uh, that you circle B for ball or S for strike under curveball. And um, that allows us to test a lot of people in a a short period of time. This type of research has produced discriminant validity. That is, it differentiates known experts from less expert performers. Very important for establishing the validity of the method and of the concept and the skill of uh, of pitch recognition that we're looking at, but not of great use to anybody in the, in the room. Now, as we just start to move into correlational studies, where we see those occlusion test scores correlating with some key performance measures, uh, that's when it starts to get interesting to you guys. Uh, now we we see a role for talent identification. For diagnostic purposes, let's not change a guy's approach. Let's not change a guy's setup if the problem is that he re- really isn't able to perceive the difference of, of pitches. Let's let's teach him that. And then this also gives us a way of teaching that approach. Uh, this is what I did 10 years ago with my original study with a college baseball team where half of the team, half of the batters were trained using that setup that I showed you earlier, and uh, uh, another half, um, equally matched, was not trained, and the treatment group performs statistically better than the, um, the control group. And that's a, that's a very unusual study. You don't usually get to have that kind of controlled study. Um, I was a video coordinator for the university, so you know I was able to get in there and, and do that. Uh, now we've got this company, uh, GameSense Sports, which the, the the best thing to say about it is that they have kept the the training app or testing app really simple. This is Twitter, simple concept, but it's got to be executed just right. So you see it's the same concept. We've got a, a, a real pitcher throwing real pitches. It's cut off, and then you guess. Here the guess was fastball strike, but the answer was change up ball. So now let's see a replay of the same pitch, but with a wider view. So you see the action of the pitch. Can track it in there, and oh yeah, that was a pretty nice uh, low in um, changeup. And then you've got a, a wide variety of pitchers because you're not necessarily looking at the pitcher you're going to hit against. You're using a variety of pitches to build up a general skill, except at the major league level itself, really, where in fact you are putting in the video, and 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 Nelson is Lariano, you know. So um, uh, you know that 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 becomes there's a difference there between performance support at the major league level and generalized skill building in the uh, in the developmental leagues. Now, along with that experimental uh, result from 10 years ago, more recently, we have an extended case study. It was a relatively small college baseball uh, program, Southeast Missouri State, with a multi-year training study. Um, that's the head coach who, um, after after uh, some success at SEMO, was hired to coach uh, Missouri's Southeastern Conference team. But the important thing with that is that actually, even like the first study, we weren't just having people do video or a computer. They were taking the same principles out into the batting cage. So there's research that shows that it's critically important that people not only work on the recognition part, but also on the production part, that is the, the, the playing of the guitar as well as the hearing uh, of the guitar. The key thing is that we don't have to do them at the same time. We can work on one, we can work on the other. A familiar approach in any kind of skill acquisition, uh, but you know, sometimes when we go to this perceptual part, we think now it has to be a whole task type approach. 
So, yeah, people have tried all kinds of interesting ways uh, to occlude the vision. We've got the, the strobe glasses, which is really kind of a different concept. We've got occlusion glasses that are used in research where it blanks it out. And the drawing is from a 1984 patent application. A guy did some really nice research. Uh, you step on a force pad and bam, the plate comes down over the batter's eyes. And a little bit ahead of its time, but I've talked to numerous baseball folks who remember that uh, that, that invention making the rounds. What I found is that we can settle for something much simpler. This being the, the ball here, the batter needing to call yes for fastball, no for not a fastball, before the ball hits the catcher's mitt, which he's got to do before the ball's more than a third of the way there. So we're calling that attention occlusion. It's not very precise, but it doesn't need to be because this isn't research. This is training. So those are the type of things that we, we understand, this combination of, of um, in-the-lab type training, in-the-computer type video training, and then taking it out into the batting cage and the bullpen had a, a very solid result for this team. You see their baseline year where they were below the average of the conference on all the offensive metrics. And then the uh, first year after training, which actually continued through the season, where you see a very substantial rise. Uh, in fact, they went to the top of the of the conference in, in every one of those, won the conference by seven games, and were third in the country in, in, in runs scored. And that was with seven out of eight of the position players, uh, the batting order, returning. So it wasn't new guys. It was just those guys getting that much better. 2015, they got um, uh, yet better, although we want to recognize if you – Take a look here that the uh, like the 6.2 runs per game uh, 2014 to 2013 for the conference is, is pretty similar. You know, the, the stats are all similar. And then in 2015, they all go up. And that's because of, yeah, the flat seam baseball. Now, we want to recognize that those are team results. And what we're all here interested in is individual player development. And hey, some guys manage to succeed just fine with whatever your particular skill is. This is not a one-size-fits-all. Um, but it is a, a highly proven technique through now more than uh, 30 years of research, testing, and training use. So hopefully you leave today's session at least accepting that more realistic does not automatically equal more learning that video occlusion offers a frugal alternative to immersive simulation. And by frugal, we mean not the latest, greatest technology, but the tried and true technology used in a different way or at a different scale, which is exactly what we're, we're trying to do here. A method that's been used in the scientific research and established with um, expert novice validity. And what we're really asking you to accept is that the perceptual part of this can be separated from the action. Perception, action, decoupled, and then recoupled through transfer-appropriate drills in order to, to have the, the transfer of, of training. Now, this simple method, when we align the research, testing, and training, can work through an entire organization. And the research starts to become your own research. You start to get profiles of what a guy who may have had this deficiency in this measured, uh, was he able to succeed at higher levels? And you know, so there's a, there's a lot of value to an organization at, at all levels from Dominican Academy to the, to the big club. And it's not just baseball and it's not just sports. If we look at occlusion-based training, we have an alternative, a frugal alternative to immersive simulation in decision skill areas like use of uh, force, uh, vehicle operation, surgery. You know, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a hard thing to accept because real is just seems so r necessary. And yet, you know, how real does it really need to be? So uh, I invite any uh, follow-up uh, through the email here, as well as to check the GameSense Sports um, uh, website. And thank you for listening to this uh, Sports Biometrics Conference presentation on real video RV versus virtual reality VR for training high-speed decision-making. <laughs>